I know. <laughs> you. Now? Yeah. Say hello. Good evening. My name is Dan Evans. I'm the treasurer of the, on the board of directors and the committee liaison for the facilities planning committee. Uh, tonight, we're going to be discussing the reserve study that took us we started the, uh, the, re the study back in September, and it's taken us four months with multiple co communications, conversations with the engineer, as well as the committee, the committee chairs, to come up with the results of the study you'll see tonight. A lot of hard work, a lot of hours have been put into this. Um, Dave Coretta is the uh, chair, chairman of the FPC, and he's going to be making the, uh, he's going to be discussing the results tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Um... As you know, as we took undertook this uh, reserve study, it wasn't just myself or the FPC. It was a, a number of people. But what I'd like to do is I like to introduce the members there of here here that are in the FPC. We have Bill Puglisi and Dick Rio, and also Bill Letterer is uh, is on as a member of the committee, but. Uh, He's a little bit under the weather tonight, so uh, we're stuck with these two. Um, so what I thought we'd do is I've, I, have, I have an agenda here, and uh, the, re the original reason why we decided to have this meeting in the first place was there was a lot of confusion about what a reserve study is, what, what, what do they actually do, um, how does that all relate to the reserve listing, how the reserve listing works, what is the reserve listing? So hopefully as we go through here tonight, we'll be able to answer the majority of those questions, okay? First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna define what a reserve study is. Um, this is important because it's, it's not so much as what, what is a reserve study is, as is, it is, What's not a reserve study? Okay, um, we're gonna then we go. We're gonna get into a discussion in items two and three of what the engineers' comments were related to our our community, and it's real important to uh, as we get go through the slides, sort of focus in on some of the wording that takes place because it, it will raise some flags for you um, in terms of questions. We're gonna have a question and answer session at the completion of the presentation. So if you could hold your questions till then. Um, so we, we took a look at the key areas of the study, okay? And we found that these five that are listed, drainage system, road repair, water park, ponds, and storage expansion account for 82.2% of the reserve. So by, by looking and digging into these five items, we should we get a pretty good picture of how the reserve is, is reacting and more importantly, how you know these the conditions of these assets impact the reserve listing. Okay. Then we're going to do a deep dive on a review of the worksheet. You'll see we have an Excel spreadsheet that will be put up where we will show you the reserve listing. We will go through five individual line items to show you how the calculations work. And in addition to um, showing you our overall things that you should look at whenever you see the reserve listing. Uh, Lastly, uh, everybody's favorite topic, funding recommendations. Um, the engineer came up with two, and uh, the committee and the board are working on alternatives. That's, that's all I'm going to say at this point. Wait till we get to that slide. It's very interesting, some of the numbers on it. Okay, so the first item, what is a reserve study? A reserve study is a long-term capital budget planning tool, 
okay, which compares the current reserve fund of an organization to future capital repairs and replacements. A reserve study is a tool to help identify and prepare for major repair and replacement projects for a community. It is recommended that a reserve study be performed every five years, we do it every four, to ensure the communities are saving the necessary funds for the capital repairs and improvements, okay? I know we, we talk, there's a lot of talk in the community about long-term planning and long-term budgeting and long-term whatever, okay? This tool is long-term planning for reserve items, okay? There are 77 specific reserve items on the reserve listing, okay? And you'll see it in its, in its true force a little bit later on. Moving on, what did the, what did the engineer, what, what was his conclusion overall about our reserve study, okay? I'll read you a little bit, then I'm gonna, I'm going to point out two standards of reference that he uses, and I will read those as well. The buildings, common areas, and site improvements are generally in good to fair condition. Based on our evaluation, maintaining the current level of funding is not projected to maintain a positive balance through the term of this study. Now, should raise a few hairs on the back of your neck, okay? Before we get into that, let's, let's look at what he means by good to fair. Good is component or system is sound and performing its function, although it may show signs of normal wear and tear. Some minor rehabilitation work may be required. Fair, component or system falls into one or more, one or more of the following categories. A, evidence of previous repairs not in compliance with commonly accepted practice. B, workmanship not in compliance with commonly accepted standards. C, component or system is obsolete. D, component or system approaching the end of expected performance. Repair or replacement is required to prevent further deterioration or to prolong expected life. Again, if you look at these two items, and you understand what his conclusion was. You know, we're, our community is now 23 years old, roughly. And uh, things that 10 years ago <clears throat> weren't issues are be starting to become issues. And when we look at the reserve listing, you'll see ample evidence of that. Okay. Onward. Key areas of discussion, okay? The next four slides are comments from the engineer, okay? The fifth slide, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Bill and Dick who are also on structures and grounds and they'll take you through the, the, the fifth item which is uh, storage expansion, okay? But what I wanted to do was to sort of give you an idea of what the engineer is seeing and in your minds, I want you to say, are we, keep, keep funding in the back of your mind, okay? Say, you know, look at, look at what he's saying and say, we have enough funds, okay? Do you think we have enough funds, okay? So first item, drainage system repairs maintenance. Stormwater on site drains via service flow or via landscaped and stone riprap line soils toward catch basins in the paved and landscaped areas. The catch basins route stormwater through underground piping to numerous ponds located on site. Stormwater is, off, is routed off site to the river and intercoastal waterway adjacent to the property. The community includes approximately 55 cross pipes which pass under the roads. The cross pipes are observed to be clogged with sediment at multiple locations. We noted a hole in the cross pipe at Redfish and Oyster Harbor. We noted multiple areas throughout the community where the road shoulder was level 
with or higher than the pavement on the edge of the road. Many of these areas corresponded to depressions in the pavement. This is an area that the board has taken a lot of effort to address almost immediately. Um, and it's, it's something that this effect of, you know, if we're here to have a major storm, you know, it, and we don't have these cross pipes fixed or our drainage system under repair, you know, properly repaired, you know, we could face, we could face flooding potential. And I don't think anybody here wants to see that. So this is, this is one of the key areas that, um, and, you know, that we're, you know, that we consider uh, appropriate to talk about. And also when we get to, when we get to the reserve listing, you'll see what funds have been set up for this. Road repair and maintenance. The asphalt paved streets and parking areas in the community are owned and maintained by the association. That's an important point. Uh, asphalt paved parking areas are located adjacent to the clubhouse, tennis courts, and water park boat ramp. The asphalt paving is original to construction and generally appears to be in good to fair, there you go again, good to fair, overall condition considering its age. Various cracking and minor depressions were observed in the roads. The worst depressions were noted along Eagle Crest Drive, Oyster Harbor Drive, or actually Oyster Harbor Parkway, Redfish Run, and Healing Water Lane. Depressions, which vary in magnitude with some being significant, appear to be affecting the drive quality rather than the functionality of the pavement. Interesting, that's an interesting point. At low speeds, the pavement appears to generally be functional. Now, considering our speed limit is 25 miles an hour, you might could make the argument that these are pretty good speed bumps, but we won't go there. In addition to overlaying the streets, it is likely that portions of the pavement will have to be undercut and the subgrade repaired, particularly in areas of the greatest depressions. We anticipate this will include undercutting eight to 12 inches of, sub of the subgrade, the installation of geofabric, geogrid fabric, and the installation of new eight inch to 12 inch of compacted subgrade. We have provided an allocation for the subgrade repairs in 2025. New, this was a new item that was added to the reserve listing, okay? And the amount of that, okay, was $250,000, okay? Keep that in mind. Water park repair and maintenance. The concrete encasements around the wood piles were observed to be split and damaged. We understand that the Oyster Harbor Homeowners Association has engaged an engineer to develop repair and replacement specifications for the ramp. Keep in mind that this, the, this verbiage was written before the completion of the, although he does indicate it was completed. Repairs completed this fall to the lower portion of the ramp at a cost of $175,000, included driving additional pilings outside of the existing pilings and adding six inch by 16 inch wood, wooden girders and timbers under the concrete portion of the ramp to provide additional structural support. These repairs are estimated to provide an additional seven to 10 years of life to the boat ramp. Following this, the full replacement cost of the boat ramp has been estimated at approximately $750,000. Again, additions to the reserve listing. The boat ramp is constructed of two different types of materials. The upper portion is a wood frame structure installed on timber pilings with concrete easements topped with four by six nominal wood decking. The wood is beginning to show signs of surface aging with a deterioration and splitting developing. The lower portion of the boat ramp is constructed of wood pilings with concrete encasements topped by a concrete deck. The concrete encasements were added in 2012 to help prevent further deterioration of the wood pilings in the tidal zone. 
This is important because <laughs> if you look at the history of this, yeah, we just spent $175,000 and we're going to get some useful life out of it. But from, excuse me, a long-term long -term planning approach, okay, the, the conservative uh, the conservative method is to anticipate the worst. So we've anticipated that we're going to have to replace some element of the debt of the boat ramp at some future point in time. Hopefully, greater than ten years, but um, we don't know. But um, so, if if you were to look at the reserve study pre study pre engineering study and post engineering study, you would find that a significant amount of money was added to this little particular line item, as was roads for different reasons, but um, which we'll get into later on. But um, you know, it's it, it's just we're trying to be. Conserve as conservative as possible because you have to be. Okay. Um, there's there's a lot of judgment and a lot of discussion that takes place every time we 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 do you know one of these reserve stu reserve studies or even even talk about the reserve listing. So it just I just wanted you to keep that in mind as we as we move on and we and we take a look at the reserve listing later on. Pond repair and maintenance. The stormwater and amenity ponds in the community are generally in good to fair condition. Gee, where have I heard that before? Moderate soil erosion was observed on the banks of several of the ponds. We highly recommend establishing and maintaining an adequate ground cover along the banks of all ponds, which will reduce sediment collection in the ponds. The community includes nine ponds, two of which are registered stormwater retention devices. These include wood duck and ibis. Five of the nine ponds are lined with a pond liner. The ponds include various fountains and supply wells. As noted above, five of the ponds include liners. These liners include a fabric cover likely intended to prevent the liner from UV exposure, which can affect their life. We noted multiple areas where the, where the pond liners were exposed. We recommend that the liners are, are covered in all areas and ground stabilizing cover be installed where necessary to stabilize soils and ensure continuous coverage. Okay. The last item is something that uh, was, was added actually to the reserve listing about two years ago. Um, it's, we, we got into a discussion as a community about storage areas and the feeling at that point was that we could take our pool storage area, the existing pool storage area, and expand it. Okay, uh, so we we actually allocated fifty thousand um, dollars. We actually took it out of ponds, and if you have a question on that, I can explain that. Um, but we actually set it up a couple of years ago, but. Lately, there's been uh, another um, sort of push to do a, a different type of expansion. And Bill and Dick both sit on structures and grounds, and they've put uh, a considerable amount of effort into um, you know, developing ideas for this new initiative. So I'm gonna throw it to them for briefly uh, to to talk a little bit about how it came about and what the, what we hope to accomplish. I think I'm about <clears throat> back in uh, roughly 2015 when the expansion was done to expand the library and the uh, exercise room. We asked the builder to put in stairs to go up into the attic in the supply room we have now because we had no other storage space. With the steps we had, we built a platform to put some of the Christmas ornaments and anything else that we had for uh, events for storage because we have no place to store them. That's been that way since 2015. So it's seven years, eight years now that we're going on this. It was supposed to be temporary. 
we're running out of space up there. And as you know, um, the space in the attic is not conditioned at all. So it gets hot and gets cold. It doesn't do well with the stuff you put up there, but that's where we have to keep it for now. We came up with an idea possibly since they expanded the, uh, the front of the building to accommodate the library and the storage area that perhaps we could keep pushing the walls out on this side, the kitchen, and also where the storage area is now behind the bathrooms and maybe push those walls out so that we can get more storage. That's how we decided for now that it might be the best use of the space. Also the least expensive instead of building a brand new building to put that in. That'll give us some relief, be able to bring all of the uh, things that are upstairs in the attic down and it'll give more room also for when there are events and people, the social committee working in the kitchen would have access to the things that they need right next to where they are now. Um, what we've done this year to try to squeeze things in, we used the guard shack and we pushed everything into the guard shack that we could for Christmas uh, storage stuff. Uh, that's a mess, we're gonna fix it. And, but for now, at least we've got something. So our plan is to expand the walls out down to here on both sides, right to the great room and push the walls out and give us more storage for now. It'll add about 492 square feet of storage for us. Uh, that's a quick fix. Go ahead, Bill. No. We will add 77 square feet of storage. Oh, got it. Okay. Uh, on that side and the uh, redecorating or refurbishing of the clubhouse to redo the kitchen, they're going to get another 77 square feet on this side. Uh, reconfigure the kitchen, which is a, a different item that's not part of this. Uh, what we need to do now is uh, there's been some conversations that that, that is approved mm -hmm. and I think we have enough money for it. Conversation also went to phase two would be to move the the conference room is what I'm going to call this out to the wall with fireplaces. Just on both sides. On both way. sides. And that's going to add another um, 342 square feet to this room. Um, what we're going to do now is get close to concrete. And we're going to do it in two ways. We're going to get the concrete on both sides up to this wall, give me a number, and then run it all the way out to that wall and give me that number. And it, the expectation is that when we're looking to make this room bigger down the road, that concrete number might not be very attractive. Don't know what that's going to be. Yet. But I think what we have, when we get into the line items on the reserves, there is enough dollars currently existing to get that all that concrete work. And the framing is going to be in-house. We're not going to put that out to bid. But the concrete, we can't do that. So we'll get the concrete done. The framing is going to be easy. It's going to be a lot easier than the deck. <clears throat> um, what's that? Also, just keep in mind that we have issues of impervious uh, coverage of the land. By doing it this way, we're not going to add any more impervious because the roof already goes down to the pillars on the outside. So we would not have to go back to the state and the, and the, uh, the county to try to dicker with them to make sure that we can get more impervious. This area, this stormwater plan is about 42% impervious, which is way above the 25%. But because this is a, a, an area of amenities, they allow that. They take the entire um, community uh, in mind when they give us an impervious amount. So they do not want us to add any more to this area unless we go back to them and make sure that they will approve anything that we do that would be not pervious. So this way, it would not add to that amount. Okay, thank you. Okay, review of reserve worksheet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover these bullet points and then we're gonna go right, jump right into the Excel spreadsheet. Um, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to show you the sort where the data comes from. What does it mean? 
Uh, we're going to do individual line calculations. We'll talk a little bit about how we create the 2023 reserve listing. And then we'll talk a little bit about committee interaction. Now, I, hopefully I get this right. That's not working. Um, Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can move that. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay, this is this is the 77 items that I talked about earlier. Okay. The one thing to keep in mind about this document is we call it a living document. Does everybody understand what a living document is? Okay. It's a document that's subject to change. Okay. And we up the update this listing probably six times a year because we get better information, okay? A lot of this listing, okay, it's, oh, there's a lot of judgment and there's, there's a lot of discussion about certain items on the listing. And it, you know, if you compare it to our budgeting process, where every year we come up with our operating budget, okay? That, this is kind of like that with one exception. There's a lot more judgment in this listing than there is in the operating budget. Because the operating budget, you have fixed contracts. You have an idea of, of what your major expenses are. Here, you know, there, there, are, there are different elements of this listing that requires judgment calls and we'll go through a few of them okay but the first thing i want i want to point, point you to is general information okay the association name the unit number of units the fiscal year start keep in mind this is the 2022 listing okay so we have year-end 2020 run reserve balance projected year-end 2012 3122 reserve balance. Then there's then there are a couple of figures, okay? Which and a few percentages. We'll talk to percentages first. Okay. If you look at 1231-21% funded, you'll see that it's roughly 40%, 40.1%. Okay. What that what that is, it, it's a ratio. Okay, and if we were, if we were, there's a column on on the on the listing. It says CY current year fully funding. Okay, that column that that says fully funding. Okay, is is really what that fully funded balance is. Okay, if you look down at the this sheet. Okay. You'll see that that number is two thousand nine one three zero four zero two million nine. I wish it was two thousand, but I've been looking at this thing too long. So it's it's two million nine hundred thirteen thousand and change. Okay, for two thousand twenty two, if you take the reserve, the ending reserve of nine thirty one and divide that into our fully funded balance, okay? Which means if we were 100% funded, that's how much money we would have in our reserve account, okay? And it's based on some items that we'll talk about in a second, okay? But that ratio is going from 40.1% to 32%, okay? If you look at the bottom, it says note, 
zero to 30 percent is weak. 30 to 70 percent is fair, and over 70 percent is strong. Historically, we have been in the 50s. Okay, so this this is not a very good trend, um, which is why, you know, when it came budget operating budget time, there was a push to put a little bit more money into the reserve accounts. Um, so. If, if you look at if you look at the basic column rows of the spreadsheet, okay, can they see my this arrow? Okay, all right. Unit cost and useful life are generally reserve as uh, engineering estimates. Okay, there, we don't there, there isn't a lot of judgment applied to that unless we unless we feel that. Um, through our experience that there's, there's more useful life or less useful life as the case might be. But those are generally dictated by, by engineering, okay? The remaining useful life, okay, is the amount of time that is left and the useful life of that asset, okay? So in the case of drainage system repairs, the very first line, you'll see that remaining life is zero because we need to move pretty darn quick on getting the drainage system repairs underway, okay? And if you remember in, in the discussion, the road cross pipe repairs, okay? That, that was 60,000 that we put up, okay? To cover the cost of those repairs. Okay. The replacement cost is generally one of two things. It's either an engineering estimate, if it's a new item, or or there's been significant change in in the in the cost, or it's prior year. If you notice the last, the second and the third from the the 2021 cost and the five percent year increase. Well, that 5% year increase is inflation, okay? So it's either dictated by the engineer or it's a good example, which I will show you, is expand the expand storage area. Remember I said we put up 50,000 a couple of years ago? Look at, what the, look at what the funded balance is now. It's because we're taking into account inflation. So if you, the 54,075 is 51,500, which is the 2021 cost times inflation, okay? Gives you the 2022 cost, okay? That's how the spreadsheet works, okay? Um, now, current funding, the last column. This is a direct, multiplication of your full year funding times the percent funded. In this case, 2022 isn't complete yet, so we we're still using 2021. So if you took this number, full funding times, times 40%, you get 6,000, okay? Now, theoretically, if we're properly funded, okay, this number at the bottom, 1.168,129, okay, 1.1 million should equal pretty close to our reserve balance. Guess what? It doesn't. Why? A couple reasons. One is actually, Two major reasons: the water park repair and our, and our stance of being conservative with respect to planning for future repair and replacement if necessary. Okay, so we added a significant amount of money there. The second and probably the most important, if you look at the, if you look at this reserve listing, you will see. 
allocation of subgrade FDR repairs, which is line 30. Can you see that? Hopefully I can see the line numbers. Uh, that's the $250,000 I was talking about. Over, then there's two phases, phase one and phase two of the streets. Phase one is Oyster Harbor Parkway, Eagle Crest, and Redfish, okay? Phase two is everything else in the community. The previous, previous year's study, if I, if, do, do you have that? Handy, the previous year's study. The cost of the unit cost of asphalt was in the neighborhood of, I think, eight or nine dollars per unit. It's now sixteen fifty. Okay. Uh, the cost of asphalt has gone through the roof, which has caused us to get to be realistic in terms of our replacement costs. So, um, you know, you can see that, you know, there's a, a substantial amount of money. Those two items in particular are the major and, and the, probably the cross pipe repairs of 60,000 as well, because we hadn't anticipated that either uh, in the past. If you take those, you know, if you take what was added to those three items, you know, it stands to reason that the current funding is going to be higher. Okay, so then we, after we look at all this and we say, okay, what does this tell us? One, we're underfunded, okay? Uh, and you say, how can that be? We're putting 200 and some, 200 and something thousand dollars, you know, a year into our reserve fund. Well, you know, for 2000, if you look at, the projected 2020, the 2022 versus 2021, nearly the same. So yeah, we put 200, yeah, I got the exact 261,000 we put into reserve in 2022, but we didn't gain anything in terms of our, our total funding because it went out the door just as well. 175,000 of it, we, we, we know, so. The bottom line here is that our committee monitors this on a consistent basis. And, you know, we, we try to look at remaining useful life and, and replacement costs, uh, you know, on a regular basis. That's why this is a living document because every time we look at this, we talk to committee chairs, we talk to, people in the community, we talk to the board of directors and we say, are these numbers good? Is there something that we can change or add or delete that, um, you know, that, we, that, that will make this a little bit more realistic? And that's why during, we had a committee chair meeting about what, three, almost three months ago, two months ago, and one of the questions they asked me was, how come this isn't on, how come this, this spreadsheet isn't on the website? My answer is, because it always changes. You, you, put, you publish this on the, on the website. You're looking at old data because it's in a constant state of change, okay? A real good example of that was a couple of years ago when we were contemplating our repair of Cardinal Pond. <clears throat> in the in the last engineering study that we had, which was 2018, <laughs> we anticipated having to reline Cardinal Pond at a cost of about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We were able to come up with another solution where we didn't have to change the lining of the pond. Okay, so. <laughs> we said, okay, we're, we we have in in replacement costs. We have too much money in 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 the in the pond account, which which is 
Major, major pond repairs, Cardinal Ibis Palmetto, mm -hmm. line, line number 24. And at the same time came the request to fund some thing. One, one was the storage facility. That's where the 50,000 came from, okay? <laughs> Two was we were able to put a couple hundred thousand, or actually 190,000 into uh, the, uh, the water park repair because we knew that was coming down the pipe. And then lastly, there was, a, there was a discussion at the time about redoing the pickleball court. So we, we threw some funds, we, we threw some funds in there. Um, and, you know, incidentally, we took some of the funds from there, and that's where we got our our cross pipe repair amount. We added something to it, but you know, so this is just to give you a flavor of what we go through. I mean, this isn't this isn't a, a document that's set in stone that we can look at. There's a lot of judgment, and the judgment really circles around replacement costs and remaining useful life. A lot of cases. If you see, in, in a couple of weeks, we're gonna be having a meeting with um, the committee chairs. And what we do is we prepare a listing um, work paper that, that shows anything that has a remaining useful life of zero or one. And, we, and we, we bring it to the committees and we say to the committees, what do you guys think of this? Are these useful lives? Okay, legitimate. And in a lot of cases, what we get is, well, you know, that fence that we have around the boat, you know, the boat storage area, it's really in pretty good shape. This says five, I think it should be more like eight. But we talk about it and probably change it to eight. So it's, I, I, I just wanted, I just wanted you to see that this is a, dynamic process, it's not a static process, okay? Um, so uh, where, where do we go from here? If we, know we're, if we know we're underfunded and we know we added a whole boatload of money to this listing to be conservative, where do we go from here? Guys, I gotta get back to the PowerPoint. Hopefully I'll try it again. That, Okay, that's at 73. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I got, I think we've got enough here. Okay, near and dear to everybody's heart, funding recommendations. You know, ref refer back to the overall conclusion, and I'll read it again. Okay. Based on our evaluation, maintaining the current level of funding is not projected to maintain a positive balance through the term of the study, which is 20 years, which is 2020 to 2040. Okay. So, Alternative one and alternative two were two alternatives presented by the engineer. This is gonna be difficult to, to, to talk about because neither suggestion is really reasonable, okay? I, I think, I happen to think two is better than one, but that's my personal, I'll explain why. Alternative one, beginning in 2024, increase the annual reserve contribution by 10% a year through 2027, which we've already been doing 10%. Increase the reserve contribution by an additional 50,000 in 2024 and 2026. 
This alternative is projected to maintain a positive balance throughout the term of the study. Okay. Alternative two, increase the reserve contribution by $50,000 each year for 2024 to 2028. This alternative is projected to maintain a positive balance throughout the term of the study. Okay. The, the obvious solution is from, from a managerial perspective, having been on the board before, is to you know, keep uh, due increases to, you know, to an as needed level, okay? Um, we've, we've been increasing, like I said, from the last reserve study, they suggested we increase 10% a year, which we've been doing. Um, our due, which have brought the dues really up 10% a year to its current level of $1,500, okay? Okay, if, if you take 1,500, just for the sake of argument, if you take $1,500 and you multiply it by 471 watts, which is our, our base, it's, it comes to 70, well, the increase, okay, times, times 10% is, is $70,650, okay? If you notice, that's a little bit more than alternative two, okay? And we, quite honestly, alternative one in 2024 and 2026, we wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't be able to do that by, even if we raised our dues 10%, we wouldn't be able to do that. Because right now we're doing 10%, and it accounts for you know, about 4% of the total dues increase, and 50,000 would be 7% of the total dues increase. So four plus seven is 11, and that's a little more than 10, so we can't do that. So alternative two of the two alternatives that was presented by the engineer is the more, is the more doable of the two. I'm not I'm gonna use that term, doable, okay? One of the things that, you know, part of this meeting was to also elicit some uh, comments and suggestions on your part related to how we handle this. Okay, right now, the FPC, we've had, we've had meetings to talk about how we could get funds outside of dues, okay? And we've had some pretty, pretty good, pretty wild uh, recommendations um, to investing in real estate, to holding a, a drawing and some other things, but we're, we're constricted by a number of, we're constricted by our bylaws and covenants and we're restricted by state law. We are, and we're also restricted by the Internal Revenue Service because we are a nonprofit organization. Okay, but we haven't given up hope. So we're continuing to work on that. And we would welcome any suggestions that you have that you think could be a possibility. No matter what it is, we'll investigate it. Okay, uh, you know, the, you know, we're we're, in, we're definitely in tune with this. The board is in tune with this. We're working together to try to potentially come up with some solutions. But you know, we we're, we're faced with a pretty difficult situation here. And uh, I, you know, I I just hope that you know. You know, this presentation sort of puts you on a forward footing of, you know, how these numbers come about, why they're here, and, you know, how that translates to how much we pay every year for dues. And as I mentioned before, um, you know, the community is aging. And, you know, what may be working today may not be working tomorrow. And we have to, from our viewpoint, we have to we have to plan, you know, hope for the best and plan for the worst, you know. So, um, not that this is necessarily 
bad, but our ratios are down. You know, if we're at 32%, that's marginally poor. So, um, so basically, uh, right now I'm going to I'm going to turn it. I'm going to I'm going to turn it over to the rest of the gang now and say questions and comments. Okay, uh, Bill and Dick will assist me in answering any questions. If I can't answer it, maybe they can. Uh, okay, and, and I, I can ask you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the first question. Okay, is that better, guys? Okay, my, my first question, I guess, would be for the technical team. I know that that document's a living document, but I've seen about 10 lines of it. I can't make any sense of it without having the entire document. Is there any way on the website we can post a living document? We can post a living document on the web. So if we could get our hands on that, that would be wonderful. Um, Now, I know our, our we've gone way down from the past studies, and there's a lot of things that, that go into that, and, and we all know a lot of the reasons. We can't go back and rehash that. We just got to move forward. That's all we can do at this point. Um, and th this one, I'm, I'm going to step on toes. But on this, this line items here, like one of the things that you say, we're going to spend $50,000 on making more storage. I think we're going to have to make some hard decisions and go, do we need $50,000 for storage or $50,000 to fix the street and fix the drain pipes? Uh, you know, and I know it's been approved and I know a lot of people want that and it's very inconvenient, but you know, I want a new Ferrari, but I can't buy one. So I think we're really going to have to to um, dig deep on that. To answer your question, we have line items for the world. Right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, you know, we we haven't seen those yet. And and just the last one, um, the thing with Redfish, Oyster Harbor, Eagle Crest, and you mentioned Healing Water. Okay, we all know those streets are all bad, but you said in the first phase you left out Healing Water. And that, well, if that's one of the bad ones, why are we going to leave that out? Let's leave redfish out. I mean, <laughs> is, is that because board members live on it or committee members live on it? So, because, um, quite honestly, I was looking at the Oyster Harbor Oyster Harbor Oyster Harbor Oyster Harbor Oh, okay. <laughs> when, uh, you know, when the reserve study came out, I was surprised. I don't know if the commit rest of the committee was, but I was surprised that it had healing water on it. We had, because we had focused uh, from the very beginning on Eagle Crest, Oyster Harbor Parkway, and Redfish. Oh, I mean, Eagle Crest is by far the worst. Yeah. And, and your comment on if we drive 25 miles an hour, it's good. In most of the places it is. On Eagle Crest, if you don't have four-wheel drive, you better be doing ten. So, no, I, I, we don't just. <laughs> Bob, we don't disagree with that. It's not, it's something that necessarily has to be okay. taken care well, of. That's pretty much what I got right. Okay. We're talking about alternate funding. Okay, we just got a call from our bank the other day and said they have a four percent TD. And if you put more money in, you could have four point one percent. How is the money in the reserves invested? Is it in CDs or is it in money market or what? Combination of both. 
Okay. Now, keep in mind that only the rise in interest rates has been a relatively new, new thing. I can tell you my home equity credit line just went out through the roof. But that being said, um, you know, we, we have fixed maturity dates on a lot of the CDs that we have now. Once those mature, we, we should be able to move those at a higher interest rate. I was curious about that. No, but that's, the, you know, that's, that's a real good comment. Dave, we have a question from Zoom. Mm -hmm. All right, this question is from Wayne Boy on Zoom. Yep. How do we see all the things we are currently spending our money on? We need to ensure we are not spending money on nice to have. I am not clear still what we are talking about from an overall need per lot to try to cover costs. Is there ability to reduce costs for things like bidding out the lawn service, voting before we add costs on stop signs, et cetera? Um, and I'll read the next part too, and then I can go back if you need me to. Mm -hmm. Agree, I think from your uh, comments, maybe storage has to wait. I love our neighborhood and want to keep it up, but this has to be critical needs first, then the nice to haves. So is there a part where we go back to the first part of it? The first part, I mean, the reserve listing is not, it, in most cases, it, even, even storage is not a nice to have. Storage is a necessity in our view, okay? Everything, you know, items of, our, of all our amenities taken as a whole, account for the 77 items that are, that appear on the list, okay? And um, we, we constantly, and the board constantly evaluates necessity versus nice to have. And we provide input in that regard. Um, you know, it's, it's, it sounds prioritization I, his his point about point prioritization is very much a valid point. Okay, it's something that perhaps we can evaluate a little bit more um, because you know if something needs to be done. Okay, I, I'll just I'll just use the, the roads as an example. Okay, we've had those. The condition of these roads have been like that for what six, five, six years. Yeah. Okay, we, we can say, well, instead of you know two years, well, maybe we'll do it in ten years. It's certainly not going to make people in the community happy. We're prioritizing it, but it's certainly not going to make people in the community. So it's yeah. Something that it needs maintenance or repair is, in anybody's definition, uh, a necessity and not a nice to have. Okay, there are some things. Somebody, this happened a couple of years ago. We, 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 in fact, we established a committee for it. The question was, was, we need a new clubhouse, and. I was president of the, of the organization back then. And I said, we have to think of a couple of things. How are we gonna fund it? Do we really need it? Okay. And in what time frame are we talking about? Okay. So all of those types of things and those types of discussions occur for all major items that we have on this list. And a lot of the minor items as well. And and the board initiates that conversation. You know, it's up to us to provide guidance and input to the board on matters of items in the reserves. Hope I answered that question. I think we can, uh, Wayne can fit something else to me in the chat if it's uh, still additional pieces of that to be answered. It, it might be the first question, how do we see all the things we are currently spending our money on? Uh, 
Well, it, they're in various degrees, various phases of obsolescence, I'll say. Okay. Some items. It's on the report every month. Yeah. Reserve it. Yeah. Reserve, yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, we, we have, we have remaining useful lives going from 19 to zero. Okay. So there are very, again, this is various stages. And that's going to be on the website. They can hear you. Oh, and that's now is going to be loaded on the website. Yeah. So you'll be able to see. Updated. Yeah. You'll, so you'll be able to see on a periodic basis what, what, what happens to those remaining useful lives. But to answer, to, to take a broader scope, everything on the reserve listing in some manner is a necessity to maintain our amenities. Yeah, a follow up, Wayne made an additional comment once we asked that. And I think Wayne, that probably got answered that this is going to be posted on the website, so it will be available. Um, but Wayne's um, additional comment was infrastructure items do need to be kept up, no doubt, and they should be priority, not disagreeing. Again, is there a place to see where we are currently spending our dues on? Is it possible to reduce some items and send more of the dues money to the reserve? So I, I'm thinking it's a question. Yeah, that's more, more operational right. as opposed to reserve. So, yeah, exactly. that, that's something we can address when we do the budget this year. And, you know, it's... Great. Wayne, let us know if there's any additional I can read out from the chat. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, back on slide 11, you gave us the kind of scenarios after the increase in the money in the reserve. So, with in so four or five years. Plus an additional fifty grand. No, in fifty grand. Oh, well, yeah. So in in alternative one, it says ten percent for the next three or four years. Yeah. Like, and then the line. Yeah, and then fifty thousand additional additional. So you're, So when you say that, you're talking special assessment. Yeah. It would have to be part. Yeah, I can't stand corrected. You're right, it could be a special assessment, but we are adverse to special assessment. Well, and I, the only other option to that is to come up with some other raffle because you can't raise it above 10 unless right. the community votes. Two is more because the 50,000 would account for 7% of the Okay, but the problem there from from a from a from a current perspective is that leaves you three percent potentially three percent for any operational increases. Okay. And I'm not sure how I would be able to do But it went to the I mean we need we need to have something that exists. Okay. Talk to me when I tell you. But it's you know you, you we have to I get it. Yeah, I, 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 I get it. So what we're saying with if we do the alternative, the bottom line is we will have enough money to fund what the current reserve study says we're going to have to spend right. according to the useful life of all these items. Right. Okay. Uh, so that was my point. Raise revenue and cut the least important spending. Uh, so the eight percent that the reserve funding dropped between last year and this year, it went from forty to thirty-two. Right. Is that because we were actually being realistic with the actual cost of things, and we added stuff in that should have probably already been in there but was not? It, it was. In a large degree, especially with the growth, it was it was the price of asphalt. Okay. Now, 
if, if, if it decides to go back the other way, you could readjust it again. Okay, but you know, it is we live in today's world. We don't, you know, we right. try to project the future, but we live in today's right. world. Well, and to your point, what that says today, two years from now, concrete could be at thirty-two dollars. I mean, we just don't know. Yeah, we don't know. It could also go back to eight or nine. Right. So you know. Okay. We can always go. Yeah, but you know, we can't we can't sit here today. But hope this is a all right. Uh, all right. That's good. Thank you. That's it. Okay. All right, go. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the podium for you. Hmm. The, the one thing I think I've proposed to everyone is that we all get a good look at this spreadsheet on the reserve study, yeah. and we have another meeting once we've all been able to look at it and can talk intelligently about it and get back together and discuss. Sure. Very good. Fine. Okay. That's it. Okay. I have one additional. Okay. 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 He said he apologizes that maybe the only thing not here, and I'm going to. Uh, so before I get off this presentation, could the presenter clearly state what the alternative funding looks like per lot owner in real yearly cost? Okay. Hopefully you can hear me. Okay, okay. All right. All right. In in in, in annual cost, okay. Now I, you have to make a couple of assumptions here. One assumption is alternative one is off the table because we can't go above 10% unless we do a special assessment. So I'll, I'll, address, I'll address alternate two, okay? If operating expenses remain stagnant, okay, our dues would have to increase 7% a year. Okay, each year going forward. And it will it will actually decline slightly each year because your your dues are going up and, and fifty, you know, fifty thousand is going to be a smaller percentage. So it'll be it'll start out at seven percent per year and decline over over the period that we're talking about, the 2028. So it'll be anywhere between probably six and seven percent increase if operating expenses are stable. Okay. We all know that that's not realistic. Okay. So realistically, you know, realistically, it's going to be, we're probably looking at, uh, it, see, this isn't my call, but, you know, it's, it's not unreal. I would put it this way: it's not unrealistic that our dues would go up ten percent a year. That's all. That's all I can. That's all I can tell you. But you know, we will. We would f adequately fund the reserve by increasing at fifty thousand dollars a year. I want to commend you guys for the way that you're doing out of the box. Um, and, and the idea and the thought that you have to do with is so many angst. And, you know, you've been challenged. The board's been challenged. And our goal is to make it turn to the top. We all live here. All of them to deal with it. And I just want to know that, you know, moving forward, the Treasury bond yield changed to 4.3% today. That's money. That's just real money. Inflation's terrible, but it's also giving us a win. 
at the same time. So mm. I, I just felt the need to, to say that these guys are on board about doing out of the box thinking, so is the board. So it's a fair question of where are we going, mm -hmm. but it's also a crystal ball. Yeah. And and based on the economy, the inflation rate, what we get on our money and our return. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Um, is the 2022 reserve study on the website yet? No, but it will be. That's another good tool. Mm -hmm. um, the report that you're showing, the percentage funded report, is derived from there. And uh, what's good to look at in the reserve study is for any line item, say something had a value your life. That means every five years, there's money projected to be spent for that. So if, if if we're doing our due diligence and do things when it's time, when we need to do it, if we have committee chairs and the board and the FPC and our, our neighbors tell us what to do, it could be eight years. So maybe you'd only do it three times out of the 20 years. So th that's a dynamic document, mm -hmm. as you said. And we are always trying to do things when we have to. Um, the other thing I want to mention is uh, there's also graphs in the reserve study. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the issues I had early on, and I haven't really looked at the reserve study, the final one, that well yet. But a lot of the big spending was right in front of our face. And I'm hoping that it can be smoothed out because that's why there's dates with the 50,000 and all that right there because the roads were there. Ponds were there, my shield needs to be there, mm -hmm. uh, some of the other items. And that may smooth out, so it may not be the big punch, the elephant in the room that fast, but it might, you don't know. The other thing, uh, someone wanted to know what we've been spending our reserve money on. Every board meeting, there's a treasurer's report. Page two is a list of every reserve. Reserve, reserve right. So that's something that people can do. All right. Thanks, Donna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, percentage was seven percent. Okay. Donna mentioned the credit report. And in that, we uh, we show the amount of money spent as a reserves monthly, and on an annual basis, we we spent in 2022 two hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars out of reserves. Now we put in two thirty. It well, took out two sixty-seven. Well, we we also have an interest factor. I know. We, we got yeah, interest of four thousand yeah, six hundred dollars in the sale of the lots. Okay, and and we sold the lots. But the bottom line is still broke even, 130 broke even in yeah. 2022. Yeah. Um, but we had the huge uh, expense of the program, $175,000. And that really ate into the $267,000 in expenses out of reserve. So I put a reserve study, or rather, the study report is online each month. So anyone can look uh, online at the numbers and you, so you can be aware of. Where the spending is going, where they are. Well, thank you. Thanks. 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 That's it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I'll just mention. Sure. Sure.